Hey guys, Eric and Roth here to talk about the final episodes of Breaking Bad, uh, season 5.1, 5. 5. 5. point B, whatever you want to call it, it's back. It's the end of the bad. It's the end, uh, and Blood Money was the uh, mid-season premiere, and uh, we started off with another flash forward like we got at the beginning of season five. And wasn't this one amazing? You walk into the house, it's the dilapidated house, and there it is, Heisenberg. And I thought it was such a perfect metaphor for kind of, I'm going there, you guys. His soul. Yeah. He sort of let it decay and it's become decrepit, all in the name of this egoic figure that he created, Heisenberg, this man that he wants to be, this image of who he is. But it raises huge questions because if someone's spray painting that on the wall, then it's just out there. Yep. That it's just his identity has been revealed at some point. We just don't know how or when this is going to happen. But we're getting some ideas, uh, as we see. We picked up right away with Hank and that reveal. And this was all about how Hank would react to this episode. Oh, yeah. And I think that what's so gorgeous about this was that I as an audience member I'm not sort of rooting for him as, mm -hmm. a, as an anti I mean he's long past been an anti-hero he's a villain at this point you yeah. know and has been for quite a while but I did wonder if Hank would have any forgiveness for him I really didn't know and I think that it was amazing to see that rage because the betrayal wasn't just that he was two-faced it was that to Hank Walter was his beacon of hope. He was his beacon of light, his goofy brother-in-law, you yeah. know, in all of this darkness. And to find out that he is the darkness, imagine. Well, also, and he feels personally, I'm sure, insulted, and he should, because it was happening right under his nose. And the fact that we watched Hank go back over everything that's happened in the series, the photos, that video, which happened so early of mm -hmm. them breaking into steel, you know, the big drum. And so it's like all this t time he's thinking back on all the times he, and he would also talk to Walt about it. He yeah. trusted him so much. And he loved him. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's what's beautiful about that moment is because it, it sort of had all of the elements of the mystery and the emotion together. Right. And meanwhile, Walt, it's interesting to see how Walt was trying, really trying to just like, everything will be fine now. And hey, at the car wash, let's change this, let's change this. And just thinking he could really put it behind him. He was being naive, but he wanted to. He just wanted to believe it was over. And so he's just like, oh yeah, now life will go on. But of course, Lydia walks in and life is not gonna go on. Well, and when Lydia walks in, I think what's amazing too is that when Lydia walks in, it becomes sort of shades of Gus, right? We mm -hmm. remember when he walked into Gus's restaurant and what that scene was all about. And now he's sort of become Gus in a way, you yeah. know? Have an A one day. <laughs> yeah. You know, meanwhile, I've just murdered these 10 people with you. Um, I, I think with Lydia, she raises a very interesting question, which is with the flash forwards it is, who's taken down Walt, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's Hank, maybe it's Lydia, maybe it's one of these moving parts she references. And coming back to Gus, maybe it's the people that where Gus came from. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember in last season, it was said when the cartel said to Gus, the only reason I'm killing him and not you is because I know who you are. But right. we've never found out who he is. Oh yeah, there's still a lot of kind of players out there, mm -hmm. you know, on the fringes. Uh, but then, you know, a, sort of the, the sad story here, as he often is, was Jesse. Uh, who we've seen at low points before, very low points, but this time it just, he just feels so drained, you know? It's, he's not back on drugs, but when he talks to Walt, and Walt is once again lying to his face, and at this point, it's like Jesse doesn't believe him, but he also doesn't have the energy to argue with him when he's talking about Mike. And you can just see, it's like Jesse just has nothing left inside him now. I think that he, I think he's really terrified of him. Yeah. I think he's completely emotionally drained. I think he's, he's shattered emotionally. You know, we saw that shot of sort of the shattered image of Walt, but that's what Jesse is inside. You know, he's carrying the guilt that Walt doesn't have. Yeah. Because he's kind of a sociopath, but at the same time, I feel like Jesse is Heisenberg's son, if that makes any sense. This creation of Waltz, Jesse is the one person that really knows that man, but now he can't even let him know him. He's lying to him. I need you to believe me, Jesse. Right. Is more of a threat than a plea yeah. at this point. And it's, a, it's, it's so sort of, you know, it's so paper thin. I mean, Walt kind of even knows by saying that, that we both know I'm lying, but oh, I'd yeah. still like you to believe this lie. Yeah, you know? so that I don't have to kill you. Right, because that when, would be really unfortunate. It would be really unfortunate. I think when he gets the word son in there, I think he's saying to himself and to Jesse, I do love you, mm -hmm. um, I will kill you. Right, right. <laughs> and Jesse, meanwhile, takes no pleasure in, you know, they got all this money, mm -hmm. but it's just, he wants it gone. He tried to give it to Mike's family, tried to give it to the family of the kid that they killed. 
and not being able to do that, he throws it away. But the thing is, he's being so, you know, he's just throwing it. So it's, you see some of it goes into the sewer. It's just he doesn't care. And yeah, it'll, it'll go to some people to help some people. But really, he just wants it gone out of his life because of what it represents. I think he wants to expunge his past. You know, Walt mm -hmm. said, stop looking back at this darkness. But he's consumed with this darkness. There's that moment of him under the table and the roach crawling over right. him that I think, again, really depicts the state of mind that he's in in that moment. But I think that he feels that same sense of betrayal um, that Hank does in a way by Walt because he admired him. Yeah. You know, he was looking for guidance and he thought that this man had it for him and look at the path that he's led him down. And it's very hard not to wonder if these two people, Hank and Jesse, might now find themselves working together, which would be amazing given their history. Yeah. Uh, but there is now some reasons to believe that is very, very possible and something I'm very excited to see this season. Yeah, if Hank tries to actually flip Jesse yeah. and Jesse having to sort of make that decision, that would make for an incredible three-way tension. I also just want to note how amazed I am by the small moments mm -hmm. of sort of having Marie laugh and say to Walt, you're the devil, <laughs> right, you know? Right. That can be so over the top, but it's not. No, it's it's all those little touches are great. And then going to the final scene, I just, I really appreciate, I think it's a great move that it's out there in the open. They could have played these episodes very differently where it's all about Hank sort of working behind mm -hmm. the scenes. But by the end of that hour, he just basically, everyone puts laser cards on the table. You yeah. Know? And even though Walt doesn't 100% say, yeah, you're right, what he says to him is, yeah, you're right, because I'm threatening you right now. Right, and it's he goes through, he does the same mm -hmm. thing that Walt does. He plays the poor little goofy me guy. Mm -hmm. He goes through the levels of manipulation. He brings up the family. He brings up the yeah. family. He, I'm a dying man, and then he mm -hmm. lands on the threat. You better watch yourself. If you don't know me, maybe you don't want to know me. Right, right. Because I'm the one that knocks and all that. And that's where his ego comes in, and his ego is absolutely, that's going to be his undoing. Yeah, and we now see it. already has been. And we see a Hank that is just so much more motivated and furious than ever before. So, lots of of exciting stuff here. Uh, what do you think is going to be Hank's next move? Let us know in the comments. We'll be back next week, guys. Thanks.